8th of February 2023. Greetings to you in various places around the world. Uh, a lot of you are in, in the USA and some of you in the UK. Even one or two here in Norwich, UK. So it's the 8th of February 2023. Um, I'm heading into the city shortly for a weekly drop-in. And this is the open door to the kingdom of heaven. Christ is the open door, of course. And the meeting is an open cafe, free, everything's free. And people are known to um, bring things to share. But it's, um, it's obedience to God just to open the door, let them come in, welcome them, listen to them, Pray inwardly. Um, it's not about counselling. It's not even about praying for them. It's praying... Well, it's praying for them inwardly, but it's not about praying with them unless they want that to happen. So there's freedom there. And in that sense, it is the church, a church meeting of people. And church is people, of course. It's in a church building. But it's God's vision for the body of Christ, to meet together, to fellowship with the Holy Spirit and with one another. So that's become like a weekly thing to go to here in the city centre, Norwich, UK. But I've had several thoughts this morning, and like I published the other day, because Jesus has set me free from alcohol and all sorts of uh, addictions like nicotine and gambling, which is adrenaline, uh, and all of that. <clears throat> My brain is cleaner and clearer now than it's ever been. And every day, God himself is changing my brain. And for all I know, creating new brain cells in there, new connections, new synapses. Who knows what God is doing on the inside of your mind, your brain. But certainly my thinking patterns uh, have changed, some dramatically in 38 years, others gradually. So this morning, um, you know, we pray as we walk around. We don't necessarily need to have a formal religious quiet time, although we do. Many of us, we, we still read the daily reading every day with Jesus or daily bread or UCB word for today. Or we have a scripture, a reading plan, and we, that's where we start the day. But the Holy Spirit is our teacher. And God is in us helping us to think things through, to examine our own thoughts and feelings against scriptures on the inside of us, each one of us. So with this, all of this in context, I was just literally walking from one room to the next at home, and a thought occurred to me. About the present. And I was asking the Lord why he hasn't given me a Christian, born again, spirit filled Christian who's a graphic designer. That that person and I can work together and produce all sorts of cards and posters to give away, and absolutely not as a business, not as a company, not as a form of revenue, not an income stream, but literally to give away cards, leaflets, posters, all about him. So this thought occurred to me, and that was my question to God. Why, by now, have you not given me someone to work with bounce ideas around and produce cards, etc. Which I've been doing for 30 years on my own, basically. I've had a little help here and there, but generally on my own. And the Lord gave me this phrase, scaled down. My business life was scaled down from a multi-million pound advertising, marketing, PR, consultancy, the biggest in East Anglia at that time, 
once I was born again, my ideas changed, my values changed, and I started to see things differently about the future. My fellow company directors and, and shareholders uh, made me an offer I couldn't refuse. Well, I could refuse it, but my, my uh, solicitor said, why would you? Why would you refuse to take the money and go when they don't want you to stay. And he was a Christian believer, my solicitor, back in 1986, this would be by now, or 85 it would have been, <clears throat> when they made me that offer. I could have refused, but I shouldn't have refused, according to my solicitor. So I did take the money. It was a significant sum. They bought me my contract off me. They bought out my shares. They gave me my company car. Uh, and uh, a big lump sum of money to go and do my own thing now that, you know, I've got a new life, go and, go and sort that out. So I took my money to a couple of Christians and thinking uh, I could work with them. But of course, I'd come from a multi-million pound agency uh, coming down to a small partnership uh, of two, three, four people and their turnover was 100,000. And the fit, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't the right fit. I didn't fit in with them, they didn't fit in with me, and um, it didn't work. So they gave me my money back and, and uh, I tried to do it on my own as a one-man band in 1986. It didn't work. And ever since, I have thought, I have wondered, why God hasn't blessed me to start a, a proper Christian advertising agency, a print organization, like there is on the south coast of England, CPO, Christian Publicity Organization. But God has never blessed me in that sense of starting a business. And, and this is why I've seen it so clearly now that the life of Jesus Christ <clears throat> wasn't a business, it wasn't a legal organization, he didn't start um, a company, he didn't try to take over the running of the temple in Jerusalem in a legal way, he didn't go to the courts of law and argue his case of himself being the rightful Messiah, the Son of God, and therefore the high priest of the temple was Jesus Christ. Absolutely. He was a better priest than the chief priest at the time, and he was a better priest than Melchizedek. And you can look that up in the Old Testament. <clears throat> but God's ways are not our ways. And, and God didn't tell his son to take over the temple by converting the chief priest and therefore the whole tribe of Pharisees, then convert the chief Sadducee, and therefore the other tribe of uh, uh, Jewish believers, the Sadducees, which were effectively two denominations of the Jews. Two different organizations, uh, according to themselves. I don't know if they were set up as companies. I don't know what the legality of uh, the laws of Israel were at that time whether they had these things to consider. I don't know. I don't know. But like I said, Jesus Christ came to do the will of God the Father, and although he was king, priest, mediator, prophet, teacher, rabbi, Jesus only did the will of God the Father, which he declared as being his food day and night, to remain in the Father's will day and night, and for him that was spiritual food, that fed him. Now, it's hard for us to comprehend that because we are finite human beings, and even though we do have the Holy Spirit who guides us into all truth, thinking about doing someone's will as food and drink to us finite human beings is an odd concept 
So I'll leave that with you to pray about and seek the Lord about and search the scriptures about that concept. What is our food and drink these days as born again believers, disciples of Christ? But going back to my thought and my question to God, Jesus, why didn't you provide me a art and design, graphic designer with computer skills, all the rest of it, that, that, that we could work together and produce things to give away? And, and the Lord clearly is telling me about scale, that my whole life has scaled down from being a director of a upwardly mobile company, rising up in the stars of the universe of advertising in East Anglia. Uh, I set on London, we had a London office, and then we, we moved it to Stevenage, and we had another office in Cambridge. We were expanding our empire. But God, in his wonderful way, stripped that away from me, allowed these things to happen, to teach me the, the very clear lesson that Jesus Christ was not a business director. He was not like Pharaoh. He was not a, a, like Caesar, the head of an empire. Jesus Christ basically was on his own. Yes, he had the 12 and the 72 and the 500 and the 5,000. But during his life of ministry, three years, many times he was on his own. And he said to them, watch and pray. I'm going to go a bit further up the, the hill, the mountain. I'm going to talk to my father. But you watch and pray. So I can understand that God didn't allow me to continue in the Christian world as a Christian advertising agent, as a marketing consultant, as a sales executive, as a merchant, merchandising merchandise things, making things to sell, selling books, selling videos, etc., selling publicity. God did not allow me to scale up my operation. Well, what is my operation? That's a great question I'm putting to myself. In a, in a great sense, I don't have an operation. I don't have a company name. Uh, and... I don't sell products. I give things away. And God gives us things to give away. Freely receive, freely give. And over the years, we've, we've given oof, hundreds, thousands of things away. Things that people don't want. And for the streets, it was tents, sleeping bags, ground sheets, clothes, food. Of course, we, we never give money away to the beggars and the drug addicts and the drunks. We give them direction. We show them where to go to get food and clothing. But of course, you know and I know that they don't particularly need food and clothing. Their body does. But their main thoughts and feelings every day is where can we get our food from, meaning drugs, alcohol, etc.? And of course, their body needs food. And so after 30 years of trying to help people on the streets, I now realize there's very, very, very little I can do. Even if they came asking me for money, which they don't do these days, because they recognize, they sense it. Either they know me by sight or let's say the enemy shows them there's no point asking that man. All I can do is point the way to a place of help physically, food, drink, clothing, and a bold statement that God's people there will help you. Jesus will help you through the people there. And of course, it's a bold statement of faith because I know God has his people in these various places and that's what they're going to do. They're going to help him. 
There is in every, let's, let's put it in quotes, civilized city, a system of care. In, in fact, a duty of care in Britain. And, and the local council has a duty of care to house people, to find them housing. And of course, there's a benefit system in the UK. And there's an NHS system in the UK. And people get helped. But of course, what we're talking about is, is pointing them to the way of Christ, the way of Jesus Christ, who is the way and the truth and the life, of course, John 14, 6. But he is the way out of their uh, terribly broken lives, their, their bondage to drugs. They are, if you like, slaves to drugs. It's the drugs that, that is leading them. A bit like love of money, the root of all evil. The love of drugs is the root of all evil. And the, and the, and the drugs will keep them bound. And this is a huge, huge topic. But the answer is, step one, admit you're a sinner. M admit you're a drug addict. A admit that's against God's will. It's idolatry. And then cry out to God in mercy. Merciful God, I'm sorry I'm addicted to a drug, an idol. Forgive me for my sins. And God is faithful. If a drug addict can say that, then of course God forgives that person. And he, the Holy Spirit comes in within that person to start to enable them to understand who Jesus Christ is. The highest power in the AA meeting is the Lord Jesus Christ. But which one? Technically, there are 50, 60,000 different Jesus Christ according to denominations. And then you add the cults to that. No wonder people are confused. But they need the Holy Spirit to be their teacher on the inside. Yes, of course, uh, God uses people with ministries of teaching, deliverance, preaching the gospel, teaching the Bible. Of course, God uses people. But at the end of the day, it's the Holy Spirit who's the teacher. It's Jesus Christ who delivers people from all evil. It's God who forgives sin. It's God who gives eternal life. It's God who, who grafts people into the root of the cultivated olive tree and of the cultivated vine, the grapevine. And the emphasis there is on cultivated. God is the gardener of the olive tree and the vine. And of course, Jesus Christ is the vine. But who grafts the branches in? The Father. Jesus said, my, my Father is the gardener. And, and God takes branches from the wild olive trees, which are rooted in the world, and sovereign God takes them out of that wild tree and grafts them into the cultivated olive tree. And of course, I'm talking about the body of Christ. I'm not talking about the body of religious believers. I'm not talking about the body of, of church members. Some of, of whom are not born again. They don't understand these things. And in a sense, they, they will never understand these things. Because their mind cannot comprehend the things of God. And we know unless a person has the Holy Spirit... How can he understand the things of the Spirit? We know that. So how can a person be born again? Nicodemus, classic, top teacher of Israel, top teacher. And he didn't know about the spiritual side of things that Jesus was explaining to him. Yes, you must be born again. You must have a new start, a clean sheet. And you must resolve 100% now go and sin no more. And that's not just the woman in adultery. 
who was caught in adultery, reprieved from the death sentence that was hanging over, the stones were ready to be thrown at her. And the executioner was there. The devil wanted to put her to death. And there he is, wanting to put everybody to death physically so that they cannot go to heaven. The devil tried to get Jesus to throw himself down from that, uh, that high place. The synagogue rulers tried to throw Jesus down the cliff. They wanted to arrest him. They wanted to stone him. And eventually they did arrest him and they whipped him. God has kept me scaled down into just one man. Yes, I'm married to a born-again, spirit-filled wife. Praise God. Praise God for every marriage, biblical marriage. Foundation is Christ. The cornerstone is Christ. And, and we both have the Holy Spirit. We, God is perfecting us. We're not perfect, but God is perfecting us. I have a, a good gospel partner in Trevor, Trevor Fox, and he's been with me on this journey 27 years. I have other friends in the city who, who I've known 30, 30, 35 years. We don't meet physically very often, but we do meet occasionally. And God is building us as his church, the body of Christ. And we can't all physically meet in one place. The true body of Christ meets in different church meetings on a Sunday, different types of denominations. But there's a very real sense that they are in the denomination, but not of the denomination. We're in Christ who's not of this world. He's not of this world. He's not of the world of a religion. He's not of the denominational religions. I want to put it that way. Jesus Christ is not of the system or systems of this world. And he didn't set up another system. And he's not asking me to scale up my operation to form a company, a charity. People have suggested it for the last 20, 30 years. Start your own church, start your own company, start your own charity. And God has never said yes, amen to that. And he's still not saying it. So let's leave it there. I know this is hard for some people to understand because the world is full of businesses and companies and we go and buy things from supermarkets and we close shops, of course, but not much these days because what do we need? We don't need more clothes. We're trying to get rid of clothes. Can't take it with us. Can't take it with us. So let's keep praying for one another to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit today, 8th of February, 2023, I need to get to the city. I'm running a little bit late now. But that's okay. I'll get there when I'm meant to get there. So, let's be aware of each other and pray meaningfully for one another in principle that the Lord would help us cope with the fact that there are people around us who don't understand what we're, we're seeing. There are people around us who are opposing what we're saying at the moment. And there are people that we know we can see falling away from the narrow way of Christ. But the Lord has told us and reminds us, Luke 9, 62, Put your hand to the plow and plow on. Straight furrow, go forward. Don't look back. Don't look back.
We review things, we pray things, we talk to the Lord about things, but we must look forward because Christ is coming and we must be ready. God bless you, brethren of the one God, his one church throughout this world. Keep praying for us here as we are praying for you and obey, obey Jesus. Listen to him, come to terms with what he's saying and agree with him because God knows best and go forward in Christ, in the Holy Spirit, in the will of God the Father and enjoy the food day and night to do the will of God who sent us into this world for such a time as this. Born in Christ, born of Christ, born from heaven above, born again. And keep receiving the Holy Spirit and keep praying for those around you. Pray for us in the cafes. Opportunities are starting to increase. God bless you. We'll talk again soon, I hope, by the will of God. God bless.